Warning, the following podcast contains adult language and childish comedy. Listener discretion is advised. And now, please adjust your headphone volume to an unreasonable level and enjoy the most dynamic and electrifyingly entertaining podcast ever to conquer cyberspace. This is Amish Baby Machines. Hello, friends, and welcome to the most powerful podcast ever created, the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast, starring me, the omnipotent Dags. The Amish Baby Machine Podcast is powerful, and speaking of powerful, impeachable Johnny Rage. Now, Dags, you can take something for your omnipotence. I think it's a blue pill, if, if 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 my memory serves me correctly. You want the red pill or the blue pill? It's up to you what you choose. No, it's you. You're the one with the problem, so. I don't have a hey. problem. Hey, what's up? Can I make a general uh, comment here? General Norman Schwarzkopf. You know, what's up with Black Friday now, like every Friday before Black Friday? Do you ever notice that? You flick through the ads or hear it on the, the early Black Friday sales. Are you, ta- are you partaking in any of those? I did. I purchased a Black Friday television. I know, but it wasn't Black Friday. So why are we doing this? I mean, this madness has to stop. Black Friday is traditionally the day after Thanksgiving, and you have to earn your stripes to walk into that store. You have to typically get there at 2 a.m., wait in this long line, and then you enter Black Friday for all the, the goodies to be released. Now Black Friday is just a general term for people thinking they get a good deal. Did you get a good deal, Dags? Okay, Boomer. Yes, yes, I did get a powerful deal. Except we should talk about technology. I love technology. What do you want to talk about? This TV television for you uh, boomers does not have a mute on the remote. And that to me is unacceptable. I agree. That's what happens if uh, the pizza guy is delivering pizza and he rings the doorbell and you can't hear it, but you think you do and you try to mute it and you can't and you miss out on pizza. That could be horrific. I know that reminds me of a time, uh, Someone was at the door, and I paused the TV. It was uh, Saving Silverman at the exact time that the dude in the movie is trying to pleasure himself. And uh, it was frozen on the screen, and then the dude comes in. <laughs> <laughs> so he thought you were watching, like, some gay porn or something at that time? Or what happened? It's powerful. <laughs> I said it's Saving Silverman, one of the best movies ever. Oh, uh, welcome so, fans welcome yes. flock of amish we love you tell us about that wonderful black friday discount how much did you save i don't know it's all relative because i was looking around everyone matches prices now mm-hmm. so and well, once first you, of all, tell, tell us what you bought first of all let's hear about it. i love tvs go ahead what was it the I, size the definition everything lay it on me it's like porn here's the thing with tvs Exact same size TV, they make a million different versions of it. It's really weird. You know what I mean? It's like... the size matter? Oh, it matters. It doesn't? Okay. You always go back to that. We should put you on the couch and talk to you about it. Just enjoying a powerful beverage, the Tailwager Blend Coffee. Nice. That's how I start this podcast. Powerful. If you guys want to support this powerful podcast and you want to have a delicious cup of joe, go to alaskadogworks.com, type in the coupon code Amish Baby Machine, get yourself a bag of delicious Tailwager blend coffee. Now back to the TV, the television. You want to know everything about this television? Well, give us the basics. We want to know the size. The... Why, why is the size too... Uh, diagonal. When did we ever start that with a TV? You know, I, know. Um, I wish they would do that for my 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 pant size because then I'd be a lot thinner. You know, because we'd go like from waist to belly button or something. But they have to make it seem so much larger so they'd get real creative. And how can we make this little forty two inch seem bigger? 
you know, it's kind of like a trick that a husband does to his wife. How can I make the scene bigger? Um, but you can't. And so, hey, let's measure it diagonally. So what'd you get? How big is it? Take? So what I was saying is on TVs, they'll have the same, they'll have like a 55 inch. And then within that range, you can have a TV that's $200 or $2,000. Isn't that something? I know what you mean. I, I, I've been through some of the big box stores and you'll see a TV 50 inch, for instance, Vizio or TLC, whatever. And it looks like a really crystal clear picture. And then to the left of it, a slightly larger TV is $1,900. Who's buying the $1,900 TV when the $399 is like perfect? Well, you have these spec junkies too, that they just go off the specs. The So if it's uh, whatever the latest is, you know, the, the best right now is uh, organic LED, OLED. And if you see the price range on that, it's incredible. So the problem is with the OLED, I like to play games. I'm, uh, I don't like to say gamer because that means you're good, but I like to play uh, Call of Duty on there. Wait a minute. You were just bragging how you get the best score. So you're not, and all of a sudden you're not good or what? No, you say that. You don't want to brag too much. There's, there's, there's the range. The only thing we will brag about is this podcast is the most powerful podcast ever created. It's kind of like on Facebook when people post on Facebook, uh, I don't look that good. Here's a picture of me. I don't look that good. And then everyone goes, oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> you don't like to be fishing for compliments. Yes. That's what you're saying, Dix. Do you, well, do you think it's all right just to say, like, uh, your kid's fucking ugly or not? Well, if you don't want to have that person as a friend anymore, yeah. maybe. Might not be a you good thing. You probably shouldn't maybe. pick on the kids. But, like, when an adult well, says some dumb shit, lately I've been commenting and getting blocked, and it's fun. Mm, boy, you're gonna dwindle dwindle away to having nobody to follow. Anymore. Well, I did. Uh, I always, I always uh, mute people that do political uh, postings. Mm-hmm. And now, like now I'm just down to like the you know the 80 year old aunt posting it's cat like pictures all day. <laughs> I got yeah, nothing to look at. It's like you and your mom now are the only two that listen to each other. And moms <laughs> always have to like it. And know? what they do is they, they do the algorithm. So if you comment on someone or post something, that's all you see is their shit. Right. It's, so it's it's really dwindling. Yeah. No, I, I, I know it's 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 sad. I mean, if you were to base your, your self-esteem on who was actually listening to your post, you wouldn't be doing too good, Dags. I'd be doing Thankfully. powerful. See, Facebook, though, Facebook is horrible. It's like when I posted that that joke and you didn't get it. It, it wasn't. Uh, and, and you, again, you should use that word joke when it actually is a joke. I was just like, that is just so. But see, see what it is. You know, there, there's the, there's why don't you the, tell your joke, tell the flock. What it's not, a, it's joke not was. a joke. I mean, I say yeah. joke because you think everything's, Hey, knock, knock. Duh. It was just a comment. Life is short. Click on that link. Because there's the fear of, you know, clicking on links and fishing. And it's just a way of saying life is short, eat cheese, click on that link. It's all going to be better. Powerful. I'm thinking. Yeah. Powerful. Okay. The okay. wisdom of me. As long as you think so. As long as you think so. So. Yeah. I also, uh, you know, that new uh, Star Wars uh, flick with uh, Ova Fett. They had the little baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. I, I see don't know that. If you saw yeah. that. I saw, I was, well, it's funny you bring that up because I was taught there's an article. Did Disney turn their back on, um, oh, who was the damn director of all that shit originally? That, you know, um, Lucas, George Lucas. Did Disney with Maladorian turn their back on George Lucas in the Star Wars franchise? You know what? How much did they pay him, Dags, for that whole thing? I don't know, a couple billion. Who gives a fuck what he thinks? He's a he's an old man. Just shut up and sit in the corner. We're gonna do what we want from Whoa. this point forward. Yeah, does it matter? But they don't. They're that Maladorian. They say goes against everything that he he hated all the Star Wars movies since Disney's taken over. He said, um, it, but it doesn't matter what he thinks. I mean, at this point, Disney now has the ability to do what they want, but. He didn't like the baby Yoda and or whatever. And so the so back to the baby Yoda. Yeah. I did a powerful Twitter. 
you should follow us at Amish Bee Machine. You will see my powerful tweets. I'm on there 24 7, entertaining the masses. I would love to hear from you. If you're a fan, first time listener of this powerful podcast, please follow me at Amish Bee Machine. So my tweet was, I, uh, I took a nap and I woke up from a horrible dream where I had to change Baby Yoda's diaper. Smelly it was. So then I got uh, powerful. Uh, people were going, it's not Baby Yoda. It was a Yoda-type creature. It was a baby. It wasn't actually Yoda. Mm. That's kind of, it kind of reminds me as you're describing him. Is he kind of like the Scrappy-Doo of Scooby-Doo fame? Oh, my God, that's powerful. See, I love Scrappy-Doo. <laughs> a lot of people think that's jumping the shark. I liked him. Oh, yeah. He reminded he me of so Spike, much. you know, like Fonzie yeah. had Spike. Oh, gosh, yes. Fonzie had a bunch of different characters to turn to. I mean, he was, he was the man. No, but what I'm saying is, you know, they had Fonzie had his Spike, which they, mm-hmm. they got rid of quickly, and then they brought in Crotchy, and Crotchy lasted a long time, but I was more of a Spike fan. Yeah, I'm more of a, a Scooby Doo. We didn't need Scrappy, but might have been cute for one episode. But I don't know. So you 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 like the Yoda thing that's going on there with the Disney? Have you had a chance, Dags, to look at the Disney Plus yet and what it has to offer? I have not purchased that yet. Huh? I have not purchased Disney Plus yet. I hear what um, my sources are telling me that Facebook. Disney is no longer, they're, they're coming out with this new epic uh, movie, Star Wars movie coming out here December 15th, I think it's being released. After that, to try to build their Disney Plus platform, they're going to put all the Star Wars on that. That's where they're, they're not going to go to the big screen for a while. Why wouldn't they? I mean, it's way cheaper. You know, they can crank it out. They don't have to worry about it bombing. Yeah, that's their, that, and that's what they think pisses off George Lucas as well, too, but what do you think, though? I mean, isn't that you always yourself talk about you have to be seated in the movie theater to experience the 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 panoramic view of all this stuff and hear the the X wingers fly by and and I mean, how will you how do you like that taking Star Wars from the big screen to to Disney Plus? I only like the first three Star Wars. So you have no problem with it because you're not a fan of what they're doing. No, they, they, they cram too. I always talk about the cram too many, too much stuff in the scenes, too much CGI, too many things flying around. You can't track all that. Mm, kind of like, it sounds like a Marvel film as well. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, uh, that's why Scorsese and everyone was, uh, ripping on, on its superhero movies saying mm-hmm. they're not actual cinema. Right. Which is true. They're just, they just cram shit in there and they, and they just make sequels, prequels just to string it along. Mm -hmm. I'd rather see one good standalone film and that'd be it. You don't always have to have sequels, prequels and, you know, and then the other thing that drives me nuts is making movie money overseas. Mm -hmm. You always go, yeah, I made a 10 million, but just wait till it goes to China. You know, why do you have to do that? Just make a movie that's good. No, I know, but I'm not even talking about the movie, good or bad, but I'm just saying taking that franchise of Star Wars. And it has a huge following, as you know. Is that going to ruin its performance by moving it to Disney Plus? Do people, I mean, the people like to wear their costumes. They like to wait in line to get into the movie theater. It's kind of an event for them. Now, if it's released on Disney Plus, it's kind of like, well, eh, not so much. You know, I can, I can watch it. Will it ruin the franchise or will it, build the franchise through Disney plus well, the star Wars fans are insane. I mean, they're so loyal and they get into the details so much that I don't see it destroying it. But will this ruin it for them? Because again, it was the movie theater, the ambiance versus just going to your Disney plus. You know, I don't know. Um, I don't think so. You think that those loyal followers will just follow them right to the, yes. to the Disney plus. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I think, you know, whatever they crank out, they're going to watch. Well, they had 10 million viewers the day they opened that dang thing up. And I don't know if they have now. This has been about two weeks. Um, well, well, I guess Netflix. What would you be doing and thinking right now if you're Netflix to be going? Because Disney also owns Hulu. And I was kind of, my research team, 
I said, find out how many subscribers Netflix has versus what does, because I thought, you know what? If Disney Plus has 10 million, what must Netflix, a company that's been around for 10 years, have? Do you know what that answer is, Dags? Tell the fans a flock of Amish. It's about 60 million. Um, I thought that was a little lower. I was anticipating maybe around the hundred million dollar mark, but it's about sixty million, and you know that's going to get chipped million. away now. You're, you said dollar mark. You mean uh, subscribers? No, no, I said subscribers, not dollar mark. I thought you just said uh, million dollar mark. Sixty. Okay, if I did, we can go back and edit this out on your own personal time. But painting maybe around the hundred million dollar mark. I said subscribers. I have to after. edit every one of your breathing and lip smacking and wheezing. Sometimes I'll just leave it in. So with, with that being said, with my research team getting back to me quickly and promptly, um, 60 million subscribers to Netflix, 10 million to Disney plus. Now Disney plus can fake Netflix for that rapid number of subscribers because people understand how the streaming works. But how quickly do you think that base of 60 million will get chipped away from Disney plus because Disney plus also Disney also owns Hulu. This doesn't look well. This doesn't bode well. If I was a Netflix investor right now, I think I'd probably bail out, but so how many streaming services do they need? Like Disney, why doesn't Disney just buy everything? And it's just the Disney entertainment channel and then it has just sub channels because then we'd be paying a hundred bucks a month versus seven well we are but paying a hundred bucks a month it's called it's called a monopoly dags are illegal no it, it's not illegal it should just go to the monopoly because you know it's it, what they do is they end up just buying the competition anyway yeah but if it's too much of if it takes away competition the fca from the government fc sir uh, that, that too will not allow the sale of the two or the merger oh, of two they, companies. What are they going to do? Maybe Disney can purchase the military. They can have their own para, paramilitary wing and be kind of cool, wouldn't it? I'm trying to think if they have some sort of military at their castle protecting it. <laughs> got... Powerful cosplayers. Yeah. Well, I know they don't. They don't want any like bad press, so they'll never never arrest anyone on the grounds. So they'll kind of just. Kind of get them out the back door. Yeah. So the TV, have we done with that? Dags or no? We go on this powerful podcast. We we get off the rails. We go off on tangents, and that's part of the the experience of this Mm -hmm. most powerful podcast ever created. So back to the TV. Like I said, what drives me nuts is there's a million different TVs, and if you don't do any research, you know a lot of people will pick one up at Walmart, thinking, "Oh yeah, I got it for two hundred bucks." but it's got the shitty processor in there. It's got, you know, the minimal dimming zones and there's so much to know about. Mm -hmm. It's really, really drives me nuts. The catchphrase for the average person is flat screen. I can go to Walmart and get a flat screen for $195. Yeah, that's great. But that flat screen looks like shit. Your, your old box looks better than that thing does. So people, um, flat screen is what sells them. That's all they know. Flat screen. It must be good. I'm going to purchase it. Yeah. I remember when they tried the curve screen, Samsung. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, they tried still, the 3d. All the dumb gimmicks. Yeah. They still have them. I was at uh Costco, the big box store a couple of days ago. They're still trying to push off that. This, I still see that curved uh, screen TV. I don't know. It must be selling in some markets because otherwise they dump out of it. But TVs are the, the televisions. Re, remember, Dags, not that long ago, to get a flat screen was like thousand bucks. I mean, there was no two hundred and fifty dollar television. People aren't using their TVs as much anymore. They're using their they're they're watching on their phones or on their iPads. How how many people are actually sitting in front of their TVs except for maybe gamers? You're not a gamer. I'm not calling you a gamer because you're no good. Um, you're an actual lamer. That's what we're going to call you. You dick is lamer. Um, did you write that down or just come up with it? I just came up with it. I'm just brilliant. I am gifted, but no TVs are dropping in value because people are not watching them anymore. And nobody's watching network TV unless you're a boomer. 
Um, but everybody's watching the Hulus, the Netflixes, the Disney, you know, and, and networks. And that's another, I don't know what the Netflix TV, the, the, the media, or excuse me, mainstream TV, how much longer that's going to be around. Now back to the TV, the size too, you know, there's back in the day, the boomer days, the biggest TV you could get was 25 inches. Then it went to 27 inches. Wow. And that was huge. Mm-hmm. And now, if you don't get an eighty inch, well, what do you, you only got a fifty five inch? Yeah, we're all we're all of our masculinity is judged by the size of TV we have, isn't it? Yeah, you know, you're almost you're almost embarrassed if you say, "Well, I only got a fifty five because it's kind of like fifty five. You know, I was like my TVs to 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 match my waist size, so as I go up, I get that size TV. That's how I do it. You should get like a stretch TV. I should because I, I talked. We talked stretch jeans last week, but yeah. man, I love those things. Love them. Phineas J. Uh, Whoopi, remember he had the he could stretch out his uh, blackboard. He always had a t- Tennessee tuxedo. He, they had to go in the closet and he'd have to find something, and then the bowling ball would fall on his head. <laughs> no, yeah. So powerful TVs. It's it'll drive you nuts. And then if you go on go on the internets and, and try to read reviews. It'll drive you nuts too. Did you find your pro- from purchase to set up to be a pretty seamless process? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward now, but now, now without, if you're trying to cut the cable, then you have to ask yourself, what streaming services do you want? And they always put a bunch of a crap on there, a bunch of bloatware of stuff you're never going to use. Like, mm-hmm. they'll, they'll say in the box, Oh, 150 uh, shows. Well, you're not going to watch any of them. Right. So I'm more, I just like YouTube, usually watch YouTube and then, and then whatever. So well, YouTube, has, you, YouTube has a streaming service as well. Have you ever of thought about that? Do. Have you ever thought about that digs? I have not right now. Okay. All right. So then like you see, you talk about TVs, you want, you want one with a good speed if you want to play games, because that's another thing. Some TVs are horrible for gaming. You know, you got you to gotta ask yourself, the reflection on the screen, if you have a lot of light coming in your room, some are better than others. It'll, it's enough to drive you nuts. Mm-hmm. So I recommend, like you were saying, like the TLC or the Vizio. They're cheap TVs, and they, they have a good picture. What was all in price tag for that? I got, I just got a 55 inch, a real small one for my little, uh, barn room. It's perfect size. It was about, uh, 479. Oh, wow. Actually for today, that's a lot of money. That's their, uh, better end one. And that was black Friday pricing, yeah. even though black Friday is five weeks away. I mean, they are really overusing that black. The boy retailers are just trying to get people in that they're just using the Black Friday to way too. And it's Tuesday. It's kind of like the Catholic Church has midnight mass on Christmas Eve, but nobody does that midnight anymore. But they refuse to give up the title of midnight mass. Hey, what time's your midnight mass at? Ten o'clock. Thank you. Yeah, you know, that's how you, that's how they roll. Um, you know, Vizio. I bought one Dags, and it really shook my world because. The reason I got such a good deal on it, I was ch- kind of chuckling, hoping to get out of the store quickly enough before they said, sir, we made a mistake. Well, the laugh was on me because it didn't have a coax input into it. So <laughs> I, coaxial cable. I had to actually change and sign up a new two-year, uh, two-year contract with my cable provider because it wouldn't take the coax from the, from the cable that I currently had. How much is the HDMI from the box? What's that? Didn't you go HDMI? Did you have a cable I ha- box? I I had to. I had an old cable box, but that didn't work anymore because it was the coax cable, coaxial, for all those people that don't know the tough ter- terminologies that I do. So I had to have them come out, and they changed everything and signed me up to because of that stupid Vizio, and it doesn't play Amazon Prime because they're in a big. They're in a <laughs> Do they fight. have to show you how to use the toaster oven too? <laughs> no, they're probably all laughing. No. Oh, talk talk about Boomer. They had to go help the old guy. <laughs> um, they they um, and and this is one thing you'll find out too. Laugh all you want, Mister Vizio. It kind of sounds like your sex life. It's all Vizioed out. <laughs> I don't know why I keep going back there. I'm just brilliant. But anyway, um, you 
you will not get Amazon Prime because they're in a pissing match with Vizio. So take that, Mr. Dags. Oh, it's actually on there. No, it's not. Uh, yes, well, it they, is. they must have resolved their issues then because it was not when I originally purchased my, uh, or maybe it was an Amazon Prime. It wasn't, it wasn't Netflix. What was it? I thought, no, it was Amazon Prime. And they, they've, they must have squared away then with so that. So speaking of uh, TV, we did enjoy some movies we're going to talk about. I did mm-hmm. while we're on tech. I did want to talk on uh, about phones. You know how mm-hmm. much I hate cell phones because there's no style to them anymore. They're just rectangle bricks. Mm-hmm. They all look the same. And if they do try to do styling on them, what do you have to put them in? You have to put them in a case, which what is the point? I mean, you make all this thin styling, and, you know, bezeled edges and brushed aluminum and all this, and you end up having to put it in an ugly uh, beaver box to protect it. So now what, what is cool, the Razer phone. Now the Razer was an epic, powerful phone by Motorola. I loved it. Powerful flip phone. Laser etched. Because, you know, if you use laser... People love it when you use laser, like these uh, floor liners for your car. They advertise them as laser cut, laser design. I mean, who cares what laser? Mm-hmm. Is that some new technology? But anyway, mm-hmm. the, the Razer phone is coming out with a new flip phone that's a flat screen. So that looks uh, cool. Wait a minute, wait a minute. A new flip phone that's a flax. Well, they're already... I, correct me if I'm wrong, but Samsung's got that flip phone already that opens up to be like an iPad in size. Is that what you're referring to? The Razer. Are you familiar with the Motorola Razer phone? Yes. Yes. A Moto remember, G, it was, what's that? I had a Moto G at one time. Yeah. So they're coming out with the new flip phone that will flip open into a flat screen. But you'll still have the functions of the, of the flip phone where you can, without opening it up, you can see the time and, Who's calling you? Wow, that sounds like my Moto G, but sexier. So we'll call that the Moto G spot. So I'm looking forward to that because at least it's 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 a retro phone. You know, they're not designing anything new, but at least they're trying. Because I'm I'm really sick of the rectangle phone. They got to come up with something new. So I'm looking forward to the Razer phone, and hopefully that will spur more design, more innovation in the cell phone. Do you remember, Diggs, on this very powerful podcast where I reviewed the uh, Impossible Burger from Burger King? You did. Powerful Impossible uh, very, Burger. Actually, kind of an award-winning, I thought. Um, it was a great show. It really was. The review, fans it, were, uh, were raving about it. Well, do you remember how I was kind of mentioning the fact that it had kind of a, a – it actually tasted like meat, but – I felt that was probably the case because they're actually grilling it right alongside the other hamburgers. They're not cleaning the grill. So if you ordered the impossible burger, it would go on the same grill that the Whopper prior to it uh, was on. Yes, I remember. Okay. Well, what do you think's happening in this wonderful world of ours? There's a vegan who specifically went to Burger King to get this impossible burger, which Johnny Rage reviewed. He probably went there because of my review. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. Anyway, he is now suing Burger King because he ate the impossible burger and he found out that it was made flame broiled right on the same rack as all the other real meat hamburgers. Do you think this guy has a legitimate complaint? Legitimate in one sense. I mean, if he's, well, I, mean, I mean, if that's his thing, then yeah, it's legitimate. You have to, you know, it's cross contamination. So to him, it's a big deal. We'll see what happens in court. Well, I mean, that's, will the judge throw it out? Will the judge actually take this seriously? Um, do they have to have a disclaimer that this thing has been, I mean, what's to come of this? Um, did he get sick? Um, is he scarred for life? Let me just tell you about this. It was a class action lawsuit. It was filed Monday down in Florida. The gentleman claims that although the burger chain advertises its vegan option as meat-free, it's contaminated 
by meat, by product, because it's cooked on the same grill as the meat products, as I just told you about. Um, Burger King, of course, declined a comment. And that pretty much wraps up the story. The suit accuses Burger King of false advertising and benef- benefiting monetarily from offering a vegan option that truly not is not, in fact, a vegan option because it, the contamination spills onto that vegan burger. Burger King did say later that they would, if you asked, prepare the burger on a separate grill. They did. So they did they cover did. their track. Okay. I, I did not know that, nor must this guy, nor must this fellow, because... Otherwise, this lawsuit wouldn't be – this is on the big time, too. This isn't just some off-the-wall website. But I just thought interesting because I kind of made that same comment back several months ago when we did the review. We need another review of some food bags. What should we do next? That's a good question. Well, I know exa- I know exactly what I'm going to do. Um, the Popeye chicken sandwich – Popeye has been taking a lot of heat lately. Uh, for multiple reasons, I won't get into those. But remember, they had their, they came out with their chicken sandwich that was supposed to rival or be better than Chick Fil A, and they had it for like three days, and they couldn't keep it in stock. And Chick Fil A was even ribbing them and stuff. Chick Fil A had signs on um, signs up at their stores where, hey, we don't run out of chi- chicken sandwiches. Um, they were having fun at Popeye's expense. Popeye couldn't keep them in stock. I actually went to a Popeye store and asked them. How do you not keep this chicken sandwich in stock? It was the problem was the bun purveyor for them couldn't keep up. So they've got the special bun that they think is really the answer to the sandwich and they didn't want to change. So they had to wait for this bakery to work their buns off to get them the buns. But that anyway, a little bit of background eggs. That's going to be my next taste test and review on Amish baby machine is that highly acclaimed Popeye chicken burger. You're going to have to come to the barn and do it live though. That's fine. I'll do that. And we'll do that. That'll be next time. Um, I'll grab the old, uh, you know, me actually Popeye should just give it to me because of the, the reach and the, 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 we'll let them know. The, Tell them I'm an, I'm an influencer. They should, they you should are. know that. Powerful also, influencing. Yes. And the most powerful that, podcast ever created, the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast. We love everyone that listens to this powerful podcast. Please do us a favor. Tell a friend. Wherever you enjoy podcasts, please subscribe, download, and leave a review. The best review is five stars, five-star rating. When you do this, you will unlock the secrets to the universe. Please, like I said before, follow us on Twitter at Amish B Machine. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, like our Facebook page. And of course, we must talk about the powerful merch. I have created the best merch in the business with our powerful Logan logo, powerful logo blazing on everything, mugs, t-shirts, stickers, hoodies, you name it, we got it. So go to AmishBabyMachine.com, click on the powerful link for the merch store. Everything you buy helps support this powerful podcast. Also, if you want to become a Patreon, we have links on the website, AmishBabyMachine.com or Patreon.com. We thank everyone that listens to this powerful podcast, and we do it all for you. We do it all for you. There was a, that was actually a Burger King slogan, I think, not, not uh, back in the 70s. We do it all for you. Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special orders, don't upset us. All we ask is that you have it your way. Call, look at the Twitters, look at Facebook, come on to Amish. We need a little jingle here from, well, you've got the one in the beginning, I guess. But anyway, what else you got for me, Diggs? We're going to talk about your movies you enjoyed. Yeah, I mean, we're going back in time on these, not newly released. I haven't had a chance. Powerful retro get- you know, that's that episode we should have is the powerful retro movie. It doesn't always have to be a newly released. We can tap that. So there's a lot of good movies out there that people probably haven't seen. And we need to go back to those, as I did. For some reason, I, I saw this a long time ago. I don't know what led me to it, but I wanted to watch American History X again. And 
with the current political climate that we have, it's kind of really, uh, for lack of a better word, germane to what we're experiencing today, probably more so than when that movie actually came out. Um, I'll set it up for you if you haven't saw it. Um, oh, man, what is the man? Diggs, help me with the guy that was in there, the actor. Ed Norton. Thank you. Um, a pretty good actor. Um, he actually joins a, a white supremacist group. And he actually becomes pretty influential with this group. He's not the leader of it. Stacy Keach actually is. And Stacy Keach is actually using him as a pawn behind the scenes. He's using Derek is his name, the character name, to kind of run all of his scandals and schemes through this uh, white supremacist group. And uh, Derek buys into all this stuff and therefore hangs out with a lot of friends of his that he converts them and gets them into this group. And they become pretty powerful, and they start to organize. And one day, uh, Derek is at home just banging away at his girlfriend. And his brother knocks on the door and says, Derek, I think something's going on down down uh, outside. And, and so Derek runs down there with a gun. And he notices that there are some individuals that are trying to steal a pickup truck that his dead father gave to him. So he doesn't take kindly to that, especially because the individuals happen to be of the black persuasion. And when you're a skinhead, you're automatically a hater of the black population. So he uh, gets a little carried away, and uh, he takes matters in the law in his own hands and tries to sell the score all in one, judge, jury, and all that good stuff. And it leads him to prison and a great storyline from that point forward. And, well, you um, should mention the, the graphic scene. Oh, gosh. Of the uh, curb stomping, the curb stomping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny when you. I don't remember this from last time, but um, one of the individuals, um, I think he kind of shot him, so he wasn't dead, but he was just kind of laying there, and, and a couple got away from him, so he's still pissed. So he comes back and see this dude just laying there, and he's like, "Kiss the curb," and he's like, "What man? What man? Kiss the curb." He's got a you know gun pointed at his head, so this guy get, has to do what he's told to do. And he said, tells him to actually put his teeth on the curb, and you can actually hear his teeth scraping against the concrete. Oh, it just go. It's a, it, it reminded me of chalk fingernails going down a chalkboard. It's a horrific scene. It really it's a is. horrific, and it, it's just jarring too. But to hear his teeth, actually hear his teeth up against that concrete. Oh. And then, of course, he stomps on him and and probably um, made that maneuver very infamous through that movie. And again, he goes to, uh, of course, the police come and he's arrested because they said the force and everything they did wasn't justified for the, the crime that happened at his house. And he has and a crazy off- look on his face. Exactly. And, he, and then he's off to prison. And then, uh, of course, uh, you know what lies ahead for him at prison? Well, you have different uh the prison is set up as a political system you either you either have to join a gang or you're not going to make it and there's malt there's a skinhead gang there it's uh pretty interesting to watch the politics of inside the an american prison system it's unbelievable that it's, that's how they operate but and you wonder how much is truth how much is fiction but um i don't want to if you haven't seen the movie it 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 really truly is a is a it's a good flick i don't want to see any more because uh, then then you won't have to go see the movie with my detailed explanation but um it's called american history um i i saw it again that movie's probably american history what, x american history x when's that movie from probably 2005 maybe and i will look it up as we speak okay look it up let the uh, uh, wrong but we'll see okay you think it's newer than that or you think it's older than that? Older. Doesn't okay. Doesn't matter. I would say uh, ninety something American. No, I'm not going to say it's that old. I'm going to have. A, I'm going to wage a little bet for you right now. It's All not right. that old. All right. And um, I do want verification because you're going to probably just nineteen ninety eight. Oh, it was not. Uh, you're a liar. You're a bold faith. Damn it, man! You're a liar. Anyway, it's timeless, Dags. The movie's timeless. You agree with me, correct? 
it's a good uh hard to say it's a good movie but it's a movie you should watch absolutely so uh, in terms of buggy wheels what do i give it i would give it a three and a half no i went even further back i went and enjoyed escape from new york great movie so the premise of this is it's it says in 1988 crime rose 400 percent it doesn't say why it just says crime rose 400 percent so their solution was to take manhattan island and just make it one giant prison penal county and then they erected a powerful 50 foot wall all the way around it which was kind of cool Mm -hmm. and this was made by john carpenter the great john carpenter that does the music directing the guy's just a genius Mm -hmm. great movie if you haven't enjoyed it please enjoy it what happens is the president of the united states air force one crashes on the island of manhattan and they have to take a powerful prisoner that used to be a military dude played by Kurt Russell, Snake Plissken, and he has to go in there and he has 24 hours to get the president out or he'll die. Great now, movie. Let me, let me interrupt you here, Dags. Do you remember how we always talked about those old movies where they got to pull guys out of retirement? Was it that stereotypical, I'm done with that, that's a life that I'm not proud of and I'm not coming back no matter what you say? Did they have to kind of lure him? Well, he was going in there anyway. So his Oh, he w- Yeah. He was. Yeah, he was he was sentenced to to stay there at the rest of his life in that prison. So his his idea was, well, I'm going there anyway. I might as well they were going to, you know, a sponge's um record clear him of everything if he went in and got the president out. Oh, okay. Okay, that's a different twist. I was thinking that he was a uh, um a uh, an old army veteran or something that they knew back in his day was heroic and could save just about anything. And then they said to turn to him and he's like, no, cause I did see the movie was quite some time ago, but no, anyway, go it, ahead. it's, it's a great movie. It's mm-hmm. got a lot of cliches, but it's got all these great Kurt Russell is, is incredible. If you really think about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, he think is. about all the great movies he does. Yeah, he, he, was, I... he was great in this movie. He did his, uh, he did a kind of a Clint Eastwood voice. Just a mm-hmm. powerful. I love the name too, Snake Plissken. Yeah, isn't it great? He had the eye patch. Mm-hmm. I mean, can't think of a more iconic character from the eighties. Powerful. Mm-hmm. He's a powerful action star, and I don't think he gets enough credit for it. Mm-hmm. But it's 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 got your uh, the powerful Adrian Barbeau is in there. Mm-hmm. Harry Dean Stanton, character actor, and speaking of classic actor. Ernest Borgnine as the cab driver. Oh, nice. That, that's, that's what you turn to in a moment of crisis is Ernest Borgnine. Um, Kurt Russell, did you ever see Miracle? Yes. Oh, what a great portrayal of her, Brooks. I mean, he, he just absolutely nails that. And I, I, that is a, that's a, a movie I can watch over and over and over. I think that's one of his best roles. Yeah, but it's, it wasn't corny like that. This is a great action movie powerful and um just the the whole look of it that is shot you know it's night it's got the the different it has the crazies the the prisoners that live underground and come up out of the sewers it has the just it's just a great movie it's a great action movie there's no really dumb side stories it gets right into it he's got a fly fly a glider into it it features the World Trade Center, which is kind of crazy, showing what New York looked like pre-9-11. If you haven't seen this movie, go see it. Escape from New York. Powerful movie. It's it's just great, and it actually holds up, too. So it's a plot that, I mean, just never, It's again, it's timeless. I mean, it's a storyline that you can follow, whether it's 1988 or 2018, or where, what, what year are we in here? 2019. Gosh, I'm trying to remember when I saw it. I think I saw it at the drive-in many, many moons ago. That's when back in the day it was five bucks to go in there and you'd see ten movies and they'd start at 11 o'clock at night. you get home about five. Nobody would ever stay to the end. W- would you ever go to drive-in, Dags? Yes. I've Did enjoyed you like drive-ins? drive-ins? What's that? Did you enjoy a drive-in? 
I did. I, I like going out. I like having a good time. If you really wanted to see a good movie, though, driving wasn't the place to do it. Well, it's, it, it's, it's for the romance. Let's get real. Yeah, there's no doubt. So It's like I always said, you know, when you, back in the day, you'd invite a young lady over to watch a movie. Mm-hmm. My idea was the 15-minute DVD when people were watching DVDs. Because mm-hmm. that's about how long it lasts, and then you get into the back rub, and then from there it goes on. Wow. Yep, so my idea was a 15-minute DVD. All right, so you uh, you saw The Arctic 2. I reviewed that last week. Mm-hmm. What are your, uh, you know, what's your five-minute thoughts on that? Okay, I'll do this quickly because you already reviewed it. No sense for me to, but I'll tell you what. Um, any t- there, there's very few where I, I really – I don't even know who that actor was, okay? He was Icelandic. Okay, he did a phenomenal job because there's no characters with him. And there is no conversation. So this is all sheer acting. Um, there's a few subtitles that, uh, and it's not because he's speaking a foreign language because you couldn't hear what he was saying. But I thought his acting was done brilliantly. Um, it's a story I said to Dags, oh, he falls through the ice. I just know he does. You tricked me, Dags, because he never falls through the ice, but he does plummet through the, the soft snow almost ending his life. I thought that's how it was going to end, but I was just more taken aback. I love those movies those survival movies of a person by themselves. You can really get wrapped up in the thought of what, man, what would this be like? How long would I last? What, how would I, would I crumble? Would I cave Would my national innate ability to want to survive, continue on? How would you, how, what would your response be? And I always ask that self, that question to myself. And I did during this, this movie too. Um, I thought it was very good. Um, it reminded me, though, there's a movie I saw at the movie theater. Is same premise. Plane goes down in the Arctic. The only survivors are a woman and a man, but they don't know each other. But then they turn to each other. It's almost the same plight as the other guy. So they kind of stole the storyline a little bit. Well, I, I shouldn't say that because I don't know the date of it, but I thought it was very well done. Um, I love that type of survival movie, and I give that high marks, probably a three and a half as well. But well, it's weird because all. when I was describing it, you were going, wah, 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 and now I you kind of change your tune. Oh, I did, I did a little bit because I was just trying to have fun, poke fun at you about it. But no, I, I love those movies where Pete, where actors are by themselves. You have to be a really good actor to pull that movie off, and he did it. And there's not a lot of movies where there's just one person I can think of Martian kind of, um, I can think where he was by himself the entire time. Again, a survival movie, Tom Hanks and Castaway, um, where the actor is by himself and trying to survive and, and, um, really nobody to talk to, uh, just left with their own thoughts and their own, can I survive this? Can can't I, I mean, those are, I love movies like that. So I did, uh, it was better than what I thought. I'll be honest with you. And so you apologize. I'm sorry. And now we got one more movie you wanted to talk about. Well, Primal Fear, uh, Edward Norton, Ed Norton was in. uh, So um, you were, uh, did you know that on purpose? Did you do that on purpose? I did because I was. The Ed Norton. uh, Yeah, I did because I saw um, American History X and I thought, you know what? This Ed Norton is good. What else is he in? And Primal Fear pops up. Again, an old movie, probably dating back to about the same time, probably before American History X. But it's with Richard Gere. Richard Gere. Richard Gere is this hotshot attorney who wants to defend this high-profile killer because he killed the Archbishop of Chicago. So he knew it was going to get a ton of headlines. Richard Gere was a a media hound, so he wanted the case. And he was willing to do it for free, and he gets it. And he works with Ed Norton. Ed Norton is a uh, um, altar boy that that is uh, um, stays with the Archbishop at the at the uh, facility in downtown Chicago. Um, and uh, eventually the archbishop is killed. They don't know who did it. Well, they think they knew who did it because all fingers point and evidence points towards, um, uh, what was the guy's name, Norton's name in the movie? I can't remember Um, because there was two people he was. But anyway, they think that all evidence points to him. And um, Richard 
gear only has to prove reasonable doubt by saying there could have been another possible person. And then there's twists and turns throughout the thing. It becomes uh, riveting and interesting. And again, it's a movie from probably mid nineties, but man, some of there's a lot of good movies out there that just get passed through the cracks that we don't have time to get to the movie theater that are waiting for us on these streaming stations of, I think that was on Amazon prime or Netflix. I can't remember, but I encourage people to go back in time. Even if you've seen a movie, rewatch it again. Um, and that's good, the good great stuff. scene when he gets real evil too. Yeah. In that's, the courtroom or, or yes, which, in the courtroom which when he gets that evil. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, they they put uh, Ed Norton on the on the witness stand. He's actually suffering from a split personality disorder, and Richard Gere knows that, so he's trying to have that second person. Because the ultimate, the penalty that uh, the state of Illinois is trying to enforce is the uh, death. They want to give him the death penalty. Well, Richard Gere is like this dude doesn't deserve this because he he has a he's uh, mentally unstable. He should be given, uh, you know. Um, be put off, put away in a hospital, not killed. Cause that's what the character led you to believe. And I'll leave it off at that point because that's where the twist and turns and everything happens. So primal fear, Richard gear, probably 1995, give or take Richard gear was a stud. I told you that before. Uh, um, he was in a lot of good movies. Whatever happened to him? What was his last movie? A good question. Officer and a yeah. gentleman. Oh, he's had to be in something. No, he's been in something. I know, I'm joking. Oh, okay. There's a turtle for you to take out of the tape. Uh, yes. <clears throat> After all turtle. my powerful editing of this powerful podcast, it will be about a, a good solid 15 minutes. Sounds good to me, Dave. Johnny Rage, as always, thanks mm-hmm. for phoning it in. Mm-hmm. On the most powerful podcast ever created, the Amish Baby Machine Pop don't Culture forget Podcast. We're... Don't forget, we're going to try to uh, do that that uh, um, review on the uh, Popeye signature Popeye sandwich next week. Yeah, if you come into the barn, I uh, I may have a surprise guest on the phone. Really? That's we'll intriguing. See. Okay. All right. And as always, we enjoy everyone that listens to this powerful podcast. And until next time, you've just enjoyed the Amish Baby Machine. Pop Culture Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast. It is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and everywhere else fine podcasts are found. Please support our podcast through Patreon and and shop our merch at AmishBabyMachine.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. This has been an Amish Baby Machine production.